One, two, three, four! The Adventures of Gregory Peckery. Oh, here comes Gregory! Little Gregory! Peckery is a little punk with a white collar that usually hangs around between Texas and Paraguay, sometimes raging as far west as Catalina. Catalina, Catalina, ar, 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 Catalina. This particular peccary is part of that bold, bold new, new breed breeding. that extinguishes itself by markings which resemble a white tie directly below the white collar. It, it's wide enough Rick will know The toy of weary is a simple Old and bold I find out Hey, 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 hey Hey, 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 hey Hey, 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 hey Here he comes again! Oh, here comes Gregory Peckery! Yes, 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 yes. drives his little red Volkswagen to the ugly part of town where they keep the government buildings. Boy, it's so hard to find a place to park around here. <laughs> Gregory Peckery takes the elevator up to the 83rd floor of a grim, grey, evil-looking building with a sign on the front reading Big Swifty Associates Trendmongers. And what, might you ask, is a trendmonger? Well, a trendmonger is a person who dreams up a trend. Like the twist. <laughs> Or flower power. <laughs> and spreads it throughout the land using all the frightening little skills that science has made available. And so it was, one fateful morning, Gregory Peckery made his way through the steno pool. <laughs> Hello, Mildred. <laughs> Hello, Gladys. <laughs> Wonder! Yes, from the moment they laid eyes on him, all 
the girls in the big swifty steno pool knew here was a nocturnal gregarious wild swine on his way up. A peccary of destiny, adventure and romance. Is there any mail for me? Swifties. This is Big Swifties. A Big Swifties way of the world. The world. The world. For any gimmick or gizmo, wouldn't you rather be involved in a series of colourful time-wasting trends? Yeah, okay. Biff. a life for you? I must plummet boldly forward to my ultra avant laminated simulated replica mahogany desk with strategically placed imported very hip water pipe and the latest edition of the whole earth catalogue and rack my agile mind for a spectacular new trend thereby rejuvenating our limping economy and providing for bored and miserable people everywhere some great new thing to identify with. Nonchalantly into his dinky little office with the desk and the catalogue and the very hip water pipe and proceeded with a vigour and determination known only to piglets of a similarly diminutive proportion to single-handedly invent the calendar! With his eye rolled heavenward and his little shiny pig hoofs on the desk, Gregory ponders the question of eternity and fractional divisions thereof as mysterious angelic voices sing to him from a great distance, providing the necessary clues for the construction of this thrilling new trend. Sunday. Sunday? Wow! Sunday, Saturday, Tuesday is better day. And thus the calendar, in all of its colourful disguises, was presented to the bored and miserable people everywhere. Gregory issued a memo on it, whereupon the entire contents of the steno pool identified with it strenuously and worshipped it as a way of life. They took their little pills by it and went back and forth from work by it and they paid their rent by it and before long they were even having birthday parties in the office by it because now at last Gregory Pecker's exciting new invention had made it possible for everyone to find out how old they were. What have God wrought? Unfortunately, there were some people who simply did not wish to know. And that's why, on his way home from the office one night, Gregory was attacked by a rage of hunchmen. Making his way through the evening traffic, Gregory notices that the other vehicles which crowd and bump his little red car are all inhabited by slowly ageing, very hip young people. They appear to be casting sinister glances toward him through their glinting, acid, burnt-out eyeballs. Trying to run him off the road or make him bump into something, giving strong evidence of hostile aggression. 
To elude them, Gregory takes the short forest exit off the expressway. They zoom after him in all manner of cars, trucks, garishly painted buses and motorcycles. Gregory takes a bumpy trail off the main short forest road, which leads him up the side of a famous and conveniently placed mountain. And into a strange cave on the edge of a cliff, not far from a little twisted tree with eyes on it. Meanwhile, the enraged hunchmen and hunchwomen rumble through the short forest until, realising the little swine has escaped, they decide to park their steaming vehicles in a circular pseudo-wagon train formation and have a love-in. <laughs> Hunchmen finally expire from exhaustion, and Gregory, who has viewed the proceedings from a safe distance, breathes a sigh of relief. Phew! Only to be terrified once again by a roar of immense laughter. Ho, ho, ho. Which seems to be rumbling up from the very depths of the cave in which he has hidden his car. Gregory doesn't realise he has concealed himself inside the very mouth of Billy the Mountain. Fuck ho, you ho. And, as you all know, whenever Billy laughs, rocks and boulders hack up, and the air for miles around is filled with tons of dust, forming a series of huge brown clouds. Gregory 
Gregory stops at a petrol station and makes a mysterious phone call. Is this the old love with a pink peeling off it? For a Chinese place where the dogs roll by. Is this when they keep the philosophers now? With the rugs and the dust, where the bucks gonna die? How many's you got? Says you got quite a few. Just sitting around there with nothing to do. Well, I just can't get up, cause I wanted to say, I'm a lost of puppy of a sister to me. Gregory receives information that the greatest living philosopher known to mankind is currently in possession of the very information in question, and furthermore this information could be his if only Gregory would attend a special therapeutic group assembly classes now forming, and available at a special low introductory fee, and now here he is, the greatest living philosopher known to mankind, Quentin Robert de Nameland. Take it away, Greenaway. Folks, as you can see for yourself, the way this clock over here is behaving, time is of affliction. Now this might be cause for alarm among a portion of you, as from a certain experience, I tend to proclaim, the eons are closing. 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 Your checks payable to Quentin Robert de Nameland, greatest living philosopher known to mankind. <laughs>